Hey everyone, it's Jacob here with another daily vlog. And today I wanted to talk about 10 ways that you can stay optimistic and positive during tough times. Uh, right now we have this Corona uh, virus uh, tragedy, this coronavirus uh, problem that's impacting so many people around the world. And so I thought it would be interesting to share 10 ways that we can stay positive. And by the way, these are things that you can use and practice not just during coronavirus times, but whenever you are faced with a challenge or an obstacle and when things are are hard and not going your way. Uh, so 10 things that you can do, and I've actually practiced many, many of these things in my personal life as well, and I know a lot of business leaders have practiced these things as well. So let's start off with these, uh, with these 10 things, with these 10 tips. Uh, tip number one, which I think is probably the most important, is understanding that uh, your emotions and how you respond to things, it, that is something that you can control. So you can't control the external factors, you can't control things like the coronavirus, you can't control things like wars or trade war. I mean, none of that stuff you can control. If there's a natural disaster somewhere, that's out of your control. What you can control though, is how you respond to that, your behavior, your emotions. So that's a really, really important thing to understand because when you, under, when, you, when you remember that you have control over that and nobody else is um, sort of hanging over, you know, controlling that agency over you, you'll be able to realize that you can start to take proactive steps to change the way you think. And so if something bad happens, you don't have to panic or freak out. You can take a step back and understand that this is something that you can't control and that you can still be optimistic and positive and still treat other people well. So that's the first tip, is understand that your feelings, your emotions, your behaviors are things that you still very much control. The second thing, and this is probably a little bit more applicable to the coronavirus and to times when we have financial hardships, don't stare at your bank account and your retirement account every day, okay? I'm gonna say that again. Don't stare at your bank account and your retirement account every day. It's very tempting to do this uh, because you know you want to see what's happening. But this is probably the, the least helpful thing that you can do because if you're just looking at your bank account going down and down and down and down and down, you're gonna get upset and depressed and stressed out. Understand that just understand that it's gonna go down for a little bit uh, until things get better, and then things will go on the up and up. So there's no reason to, to keep staring at your, your retirement account, your savings accounts. Don't, don't look at it. Just understand and accept that there's going to be a period of a couple weeks, maybe a couple months, where things are going to go down. Accept it. Embrace it. Be okay with it. And just know that once we get through this, things will go back. So avoid staring at your retirement accounts and your bank accounts you know, every, every day uh, because that's not going to help you. That's just going to put you in a bad mood. Uh, the second thing is... Um, don't have the news on 24-7. I know some people who just have like the news blaring in the background. They have the radio blaring in the background, constantly looking at the news. And man, regardless of coronavirus or not, that's just not a good thing to have. Uh, you know, there used to be a time where the only way that you got your news was from, you know, the, the town crier. You know, there's a stand-up comedian, Tom Papa, that I love. And he has this stand-up special where he talks about that's how we used to get the news, where somebody would literally ride into town on a horse and they would read the news of the day. And you got the news once a day, or maybe through some gossip. Now the news is on 24-7. You got social media, you got it bombarding you non-stop. Every negative thing that happens in every corner of the world gets broadcast to you all the time on your phone, on your computer, on your TV, through whatever connected devices that you have. So stop having it on in the background 24-7. It's not necessary. It's not needed. If you do want to listen to the news, then give yourself structured times during the day to do it. Maybe do it once in the morning and once at night. Or maybe just do it once at night. You don't need to have it on 24-7 in the background. It's not healthy for you, for your family, for your friends. It's just not good to do. And if you are going to be listening to the news uh, or reading the news, Make sure that you pay attention to reputable sources. Don't just listen to all sorts of garbage that's out there. People keep forwarding me links uh, you know, about rumors and this and that. I don't want it. Don't send it to me. I don't care. I'm going to look at the news maybe once a day, and the news that I look at is going to be from a reputable, reliable source like the CDC, like the World Health Organization, uh, someplace that, that I feel I can trust. Um, the next tip is to stay away from people who are pessimistic and doom and gloom. This is a big one as well. 
and these might be your friends, these might be your family members, but if you have people around you who are just like, oh my God, the world is gonna end, this sucks, blah, 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 you can't have those people in your life right now. I'm sorry. Uh, and like I said, these might be your close friends, these might be family members, and you don't need to say anything rude to them, but you can visibly kind of take a step back. You know, Maybe you don't text as much, maybe you, you don't call as often, and if they approach you and say, hey, what's going on? You could simply say, look, these are tough times, um, and, and I love you as a friend, I love you as a family member, but I really need to surround myself with positivity. And to be honest, I, I just really don't wanna hear about all these negative things that you keep saying. You know, No offense, but I, I just can't do it right now. And that's fine, okay? That's fine. You can say that to a friend, you can say that to a family member. Uh, if, if they're close to you, they will understand, they will appreciate it. But don't surround yourself with people who are just gonna constantly focus on the negative and the pessimistic. That's not gonna be good for you. Uh, for your physical health, your mental health, don't do it, avoid it. Uh, another thing, uh, another tip for you is to make sure you have a positive support network. And again, applicable for the coronavirus, but just as applicable regardless when you have a tough time. Uh, make sure you have a good support network, whether it's a spouse, whether it's family members, whether it's friends, you need to have somebody who you can reach out to and talk to to get support. Somebody who's gonna say, you know what, it's okay. Somebody who's gonna give you a hug if you need to, if you need it. Somebody who's gonna give you those supportive words of encouragement. For me, um, nobody does a better job of that than my wife, Blake. You know, I have friends that I talk to who are supportive as well. My family members are supportive as well. Those are the people you need to have around you, not just during tough times, but at all times, especially during tough times. So really pay attention to who you surround yourself with uh, in your life and especially during tough times because their attitude and behavior and mood can oftentimes impact yours. And if you surround yourself with positive and optimistic people, you will be more positive and optimistic. If you surround yourself with negative people, guess what? You're gonna be a little bit more negative and cynical and probably a little bit freaked out as well. Um, next thing to remember is that this is temporary. Uh, I fly a lot. Uh, well, I used to fly a lot when I was giving speaking engagements. Now, you know, everything is paused. Um, so, uh, but when I did fly, I, I hate turbulence. Like a really bad turbulence, it kind of freaks me out. Sometimes I get a little scared from it, you know, especially if it's really bad. But you gotta think of this like turbulence. And if you're sitting in a plane and it starts shaking like crazy, it's temporary. Eventually you get to kind of that, that smooth air, the smooth flying. And I think this is very much the same, whether it's coronavirus or anything else, it's the turbulence, it's temporary, it's the scary shaking, but eventually you will get to that smooth air, you will get to the smooth sailing. So just remember that this is a temporary thing and it's not something that's gonna be permanent. Uh, tip number seven is to remember to practice self-care. Whatever it is that you need to do to look after yourself, um, you know, getting a full night of sleep, exercising, you know, I do home workouts, my wife does home workouts, uh, eating healthy, we still try to eat healthy, we still go for walks, uh, we still, you know, my wife still meditates, I still take time each day to do chess stuff because it's what I'm passionate about and what I love, so I, I make sure that I can still do stuff like that. So you really need to make sure that you're giving yourself time to practice self-care and getting time for yourself, regardless of what that means for you, whether it's reading a book, whether it's, uh, you know, who knows what it is, do whatever you need to do to practice a little bit of self-care. Um, tip number eight is to remind yourself every day what you have to be grateful for. You know, even during tough times, like for me, I'm losing tons of money on speaking engagements and, and various projects, and it's very easy for me to just sit there and go like, oh my God, I'm losing so much money, everything's terrible. But instead, I try to remind myself, you know what, my wife is healthy, my three-year-old is healthy, we have another baby on the way in May, like, you know, this, this miracle of life. We, so I'm very, very grateful that um, my family's healthy, that those very close to me are healthy, that I still have a roof over my head. I try to look at the positives, and I think that's really, really important for all of us to do, uh, regardless of what our circumstance or situation is. There are always things in your life that are positive and those are the things that you need to remember. Those are the things that you need to focus on, especially, especially during tough times, but just in general, it's always good to uh, remind yourself that you have positive things going on in your life. Uh, tip number nine is to uh, focus your time and energy onto something. So you need to have something constructive that you can do, whether it's a hobby, like for me, chess, whether it's work, whether it's uh, wanting to write a screenplay that you've always been writing to write, whether it's uh, reading a book that you've always been wanting to open, regardless of what it is, 
you need to have something that can take your time and attention. You, you can't just sit there and, and watch the news 24 seven and have your friends texting you that the world is gonna end and like, you don't wanna be surrounded by that. So give yourself some sort of an outlet. Uh, for me, even lately, I've been doing a lot of drawing and coloring with my three-year-old, which is, I mean, surprisingly very, very relaxing. And it takes my mind off of everything. I'm just doodling, you know, little hamburgers and pizzas and cupcakes and like little houses and just whatever my three-year-old wants to color and draw. And that's a fantastic way to just, you know, clear your head, forget about all this crazy stuff that's going on out there and um, give your give yourself some sort of a creative outlet. So whatever it is that you have in your life, have something that you can turn your time and attention to. And the last tip, and this is something that, uh, that we in, in my house are using quite a bit, is use technology as your friend. So it's amazing that, that you know, we have family, for example, in Southern California, uh, Blake's mom is in Savannah, Georgia, and we use Amazon Alexa, for example, and for literally for like every day for an hour, my three-year-old will talk to um, her grandmother and they're gonna, they do art together. You know, she has an Amazon device, we have one so they can see each other and she's, a, she's an art professor and so she's teaching my three-year-old how to draw, how to do different shapes, how to mix colors together and you know, they, she has like a little easel set up and it's, I mean, it's amazing that just the things that you can do. So we're talking to family members, they, they do little lessons with her online, how to count. Uh, Blake's dad is showing her like little, um, uh, a deck of cards and she counts, you know, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, my parents are doing funny little things with her as well. So it's, I mean, it's, we use technology as a way to stay connected with each other. So use technology at your disposal. I think it's gonna be um, a huge help, especially during these types of tough times when you can't even really go outside. So those are my 10 tips, my, my 10 ways that you can stay optimistic and positive um, during the coronavirus times. And these, again, are things that you can probably use uh, regardless of what the situation is. It doesn't have to be coronavirus, but it's especially applicable now. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any other tips that you want to share, please leave a comment. I'd, I'd love to hear from you, and I'm sure uh, other people who are looking to learn as well would, would love to hear from you too. So I hope you're having a wonderful, uh, wonderful day wherever in the world you are. And remember, stay positive, stay optimistic. This too will pass and we will all get through it together. And I'll talk to you very, very soon.